Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day. Yeah, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's put our hands together, everybody. Come on. What did Jesus do today? Oh, what did Jesus do today? Oh, what did Jesus do today?
got a right to praise the Lord. Come on, help us lift him up. Amen. 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 Our scripture reader for, for this morning will be coming from the book of Psalms, the, ninth, the uh, 119th chapter. Begin reading at the 66th verse. And the word of God reads as follows. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. I just read from the book of Psalms 119, verses 66 through 68. May the Lord bless the hearing, reading, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that thou was God, the Son of God, the living water. Father God, thank you for sending your son that makes all of this possible. We worship you because you sent him. And after he came back into your presence, you sent your spirit, Father God, that lives and dwells in us. We have power, Father God, the same power that raised the dead. And that power that I'm talking about gives us the ability and the power to praise your name. Father God, we're going to bless your name today. Every opportunity we get, we're going to bless your name. Father God, you woke us up this morning, and you didn't have to. You saved a wretch like us, and you didn't have to. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Father God, your word is power. Your word is truth. Father God, your word does things that no one else can do. Take a sinner who didn't love you, who was your enemy, and make us saints, make us righteous, make us holy. Father God, for that we said thank you. Now send us a word that will challenge us, convict us, prayerfully correct us. Father God, so that we can do the things that we have been assigned to do. Father God, you told us, tell a dying world that your son saves. Tell them, no matter what they did, what they're doing, he can turn it around. He can do all things. Father God, I thank you for my life. I remember, Father God, when I wasn't so good. But Father God, now all I want to do is try to act right. Father God, because you told us, if we bless you, you will bless us in return. Father God, I don't even toss and turn. Father God, no matter what I go through, I know that you're keeping me. Not only me, you're keeping us. All the sickness and the disease and whatever we're going through, Father God, you said cast it on you because you can carry it. If everybody in the world gave it to you at the same time, you would still have room to receive more. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for my wife and my family. Thank you for my brothers, my daughter, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Thank you for my New Hope family. Father God, I love my family. Not only New Hope, I love your people, Father God, because you finally got through this hard. And Father God, you changed it. And now all I know how to do is love. Father God, that gift came from you. So we're going to bless your name. We're going to worship your name. We're going to honor your name. We're going to glorify your name. We're going to magnify your name. We're going to exalt your name, Father God. Because, Father God, thank you. Forgive us of our sins. Because no matter how I pray, we still fall short. And we are as filthy rags. But you say if we ask you to forgive us, you will forgive us, Father God. And you will restore us into where and, and, and to where we need to be. 
Father God, have your way in your, in your house of worship. Father God, have your way. Change somebody today, Father God. Let someone who don't know you come and accept you, Father God, because tomorrow is not promised. Father God, I love you. I love you. And continue not only me, move me, move us, and replace it with you. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise, give you the honor, and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, I try to pray. Amen. Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. Amen. At this time, we give way for our welcome, followed by our announcements. Morning, church. Good morning. Giving all praises to God, who's the head of my life, respect to Pastor Carter and the, all the other ministers in the pulpit, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'd like to welcome all of our guests today, and uh, I hope you enjoy our, work, our worship service. And if you're looking for a church home, please consider New Hope. Thank you, and may God bless you. Good morning, my New Hope family and those that are on live stream. In respect to my pastor, the other ministers, to my first lady, I have been assigned to do your announcements for this morning. All right. All right. These announcements that I am about to make does not have an expiration date. Every church door that's open in Jesus' name should always have this ministry ongoing. All right, New Hope Baptist Church Sunday School every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. It's all about Jesus being an authentic church. The next one is Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Join us in the study of the Book of Romans, an ongoing and awesome study. Next is the teen and young adult Bible study. Every Thursday at 6.30 p.m., New Hope Baptist Church, dinner and child care is provided. Those are three very strong and necessity ministries that need to be ongoing in every church that's teaching Jesus. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>
time for a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
In the church, say amen. Amen. It's time for prayer. It's time for prayer. We have many on our prayer list. If you would bear with me, if you would bear with me for a moment, we want to announce the homegoing services for Ida Bell, Brother Bill Mitchell's mother. The service will be on April 25th at 11 a.m. here at New Hope Baptist Church. Prior to the service on the 11th, on the 12th, on the 12th at the Mission Memorial Park up the hill on Ord Grove will be the viewing. That viewing will be from, I believe, 1 to 4. Correct? Thank you. Also to announce the funeral service, the homegoing celebration for Pastor Murray. That will be on the 20th of this month at Victory Temple Church at 11 o'clock with the viewing prior on the 19th at the Ocean View Baptist Church. The time will announce as soon as we get the time for the viewing. So our list goes on, the Lord already knows before I call each name out. We're praying for Pastor Carter and Lady Carter. We're praying for all churches open in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Mother Dawlett Stell, Mother Mary Childs, Brother Don Wakefield, Brother James Frakes, the Hunter brothers Tillman, Lucas, and Lucas, Brother Jonathan Gray, Malik Hughes, Praying for Brother Preston Howard, Sister Ilona Cooper, who's in the house today. Sister Sharonda King, who's in the house today. Sister Terribia, who's in the house today. Mother Baines, who's in the house today. Praying for Sister Sharonda Braggs, Sister Kathleen, and Sister Agnes, Sister Kathleen Shepard, Sister Agnes Porter, Sister Sherry Smith. Mother Young, Sister Carlish Crow, Mother, Sister Carlish Crow, Mary Dandridge, who's in the house today. Amen. Sister Ethel Bailey, who's in the house today, who had a procedure. We're praying for the Rogers family. We're praying for all mothers and fathers. We're praying for Chris Hinkle. We're praying for Bill Hare. And we're praying for you, my brothers and sisters. I'm happy to see my uncle, Uncle Charles. He's in the service today. And in the middle of the night, there's one name he calls out. That's the name of Jesus. At this time, Reverend Trope is coming to lead us in prayer. Amen. Father in heaven, we, your people, come before you right now. Father God, as the speaker for the people right now, God, I don't know exactly what to say, God, but I pray, God, that you would word my mouth right now, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, you heard the petitions that were made. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your love for us, Father God. I thank you for your son, your darling son, Father God, Jesus the Christ that died on a cross, Lord God. But yet, but yet, Father God, got up with all power in his hand, Father God, with his ascension back to you, Father God, giving us the victory for what he did, Father God, on Calvary's cross. Father God, everything that we need today, Father God, every person that is going through right now father god lord because of what you your son did on the cross father god we have the ability to call upon your name we have the ability lord god to know lord god that everything is going to be all right we know father god through your word lord god if we cast all our cares upon you father god that everything will be all right father god lord let us hold fast to the promises of your word dear god father god Thank you for those who have went through, through sickness, through heartache and pain, Father God, that you have brought through. 
Bless those that are going through right now, Father God. Give them the victory, Father God. Let them know that they got the victory, even though it can't be seen at this present moment, Father God. Lord, we already know, Lord, through your word, Lord, that we have it. Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the man of God at this church, Lord God, to your angel of this house, Lord God, that you have put before us, Father God. Continue to bless him. Continue to have your way upon his life. Touch his helpmate, Lord, that stands by his side. Bless their family. Then I ask that you bless our church family, God, that you will continue to have your way upon each and every one of us, God. Touch our deacons and deaconess. God, touch our mothers and our fathers of this church. Touch our usher board. Touch our preachers, dear God. Lord, touch us all, Lord God, from, from the back to the front, side to side, Lord God. You have your way upon us, Lord. Lord, you know what we go through each and every day, God. Lord, we are a suffering people, a suffering people, God, because you went through, God. And Lord, we have to go through. Lord, we know, Lord God, that everything is not going to be a bed of roses, but Lord, we have you, Lord God, to depend on, Lord. And God, for that, I say thank you. For that, we say thank you, Lord God. Touch, Lord God, only as you can, Lord God. Minister to your people, Father God. Lord, you know know the ones that are going through. Father God, you see smiles on some people's face, but God, down on the inside, God, they got a frown, Lord God. Pick that person up today, God. Give them strength, God, to go on, God. Lord, you know, Lord God, what it is, Lord God, that they're going through, God. I'm asking for your help, God. Send your spirit, God. It's already in this prayer, in this here in your place, Lord God. Lord God, because we're here, Lord God. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst, God. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you're going to do, Father God. Lord, last but not surely not least, Father God, forgive us, Lord God, of anything we said, done, and thought, Lord God, that wasn't of you. Wash us clean, Lord God, so that everything I said, Lord God, will go forth with power and truth, Lord God, because of what I believe in you, Lord God, what we believe in you, Lord God. Lord, walk in by faith and trust in all that you do. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify your name for all that has been done and all that will be done. All these blessings we ask for in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
I could read it. It says, NHBC is now accepting online mobile tithings and offering. It says, NHBC, Seaside.com is the address, P.O. Box 834, Seaside, California. www.givelify.com. Let's pray over the monies that we are about to give the Father. Heavenly Father, you have set aside this part of your service for us to give back a portion of what you've given us throughout the month, throughout the year, Father. You know how much you've given us we pray thee, Lord, that you give us the spirit of giving back what you have given us. We pray, Father, for those that want to give but aren't able to give. We seek a blessing for them as well. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Father, that it is sufficient that we give back. Forgive us of our sins while we are giving back to you, Father. Again, we pray for those, Father, who wanted to give back but weren't able to give, Father. Bless those, Father, that only had the penny to give back to you, Father. Let that blessing fall upon them the same as it would for those that give a hundred or even a thousand. In Jesus' name we pray, Father, not my name, but in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
God in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being in the house of prayer. Even one more time. You kept us from last night to this morning. You woke us. You started us on our way. Allowed us to make our way to the house of prayer. This is not the Easter crowd. This is the Resurrection Sunday crowd. This is not the calendar Christian. This is the crucified Christ Christian. And we come out for no other reason than to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Thank you, O oh God, for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Now have mercy on us, have mercy on me. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer, forgive our sin. And now as your word is declared, we pray if there be any that don't know you in the pardon of our sin, of their sin, that they would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way, O oh God. In the matchless name of Jesus we pray, let every heart say amen from the Psalms, Psalms 119, verse 66 through 68. Um, forgive us, forgive us, Vanessa. We forgot to mention you in our prayer, on our prayer list. Uh, Vanessa, uh, her sister passed away a week or two ago. And so we wanted to let her know we are continuing to pray for her, Amen. keep her in prayer. And then also, let's keep Sandra Boone, Deaconess Sandra Boone in prayer, uh, and all those who are on our sick list. From Psalms 119, verse 66 through 68, we find these words. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept your word. You are good. You are good. And do us good. Teach me your statutes. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme for this Resurrection Sunday is what will it take? What will it take? What will it take to get people to see that time is getting short, that it's getting late in the evening, and the sun is going down? What will it take for people to take God serious concerning the condition of their eternal soul? The theme and the question is, what will it take? We, we just came out of the worst pandemic in our natural lifetime. Right. And yet people are trying hard to get back to their pre-pandemic program. <laughs> you would think, you would think our churches would be filled from pillar to post given the fact that we have experienced right. this COVID-19 pandemic these last four years, right. even during the peak of the pandemic, people who never prayed before started praying. But now they are trying to get back to their pre-pandemic program. During the pandemic season, nearly, nearly 7 million people died worldwide. 1.16 million of those deaths were right here in the United States. Many of them were in this community. The question is, what will it take? What will it take for Jesus to get people's attention? What will it take for Jesus to keep people's attention. 
That's even in the church. The writer of this 119th number of Psalms clearly understood his assignment. This 119th Psalm is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. It has 176 lines, 176 verses, with each verse dedicated to the knowledge an understanding of the word of God. Right. You can't tell me God don't take his word serious. Right. Psalms 119 teaches us that true joy in the Lord comes only to those who are completely dedicated to the study, not just browsing through, to the study and understanding of the word of God. The more we study God's word, the better we should know God. The better we know God, the more we should love him and appreciate him. I dare you to give him praise right now. I'm talking about the folk that, that say you love him. And yet, even after I said that, some folk refused to give him praise. The more you study about God, the better you should know him. And the better we know God, the more we should love him and appreciate him. I'm talking about God the Father because you need to know you need to know you got the right God. I'm talking about God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, not three different gods, but one God, the same God. Talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, that says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That gives you all three persons of the Godhead. This is the only one true God that we should get to know better. Amen. The only reason uh-huh. someone would reject the Father and the Son mm-hmm. is because they don't know no better. Right. Yet there is no, no excuse for not knowing better. There is no excuse for spiritual stupidity. Right. I didn't stutter. There is no excuse for spiritual stupidity. Psalms 14 and 1 says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. A fool is different than someone who is ignorant. Someone ignorant is someone who just don't know any better. A fool is different. The word fool comes from the Hebrew word nabal. Nabal means to be stupid means to be wicked. There's a big difference between being ignorant and being stupid. Basically, a fool is stupid because they know better but won't do better. Still, there is no excuse for staying ignorant. There is no excuse for being a fool. It's not clear, it's not clear who wrote this 119th Psalm. But what is clear, the writer is neither ignorant nor stupid. The writer says in Psalms 119, verse 66, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed your commandments. The writer here, it's a prayer. The writer pleads with God to teach him how to exercise wisdom and understanding. That's what he means by good judgment and and, and knowledge. Good judgment is godly wisdom, Uh while knowledge is godly understanding. Watch this. Wisdom without understanding is like a car without an engine. You ain't going nowhere. Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 4, chapter 7 Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. 
Godly wisdom must be accompanied with spiritual understanding, spiritual discernment, because godly wisdom help us to rightly discern between what is true and what is not. You ought to realize by now, you what you're hearing right now is true. We ought to be able to discern what is God and what is not, what is good and what is evil. So the writer says, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed your commandments. The writer, he's praying that God teach him wisdom and understanding based on the commandments of God. The strength of godly wisdom is found in the knowledge of the word of God. True wisdom. How do you know true wisdom only comes from God? Romans 10 verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So our faith should be rooted in the word of God. God's word teaches us how to apply wisdom and discernment when making life decisions. How many of it, listen, when making any decision, you need to exercise spiritual wisdom and discernment. Watch this, watch this. To seek wisdom is admitting the fact that you don't have all the answers. Watch this. It takes a humble heart to admit the fact that without the Lord, we can do nothing. I didn't say we can do something. I said without the Lord, we can do nothing. In order, in order to make wise decisions, we need God's guidance and instruction. Even at our very best, we are still extremely limited in our human abilities. But how many know God has no limitations? I said, how many know God has no limitations? Despite our limitations, God's wisdom teaches us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so godly wisdom teaches us to submit ourselves to the will of God to the way of God, and to the word of God. So the writer says, teach me to exercise godly wisdom and godly understanding because by faith I have believed your commandments. He says, by faith I believed your word. But then, watch this, the writer says, it wasn't always like that. He says in verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray. <laughs> Y'all see that in the text? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Don't miss this. The writer says he suffered many afflictions. These afflictions happened before he believed God's word, but after he went astray. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Affliction comes in all shapes and forms. Could be sin, could be health, could be financial, occupational, personal, relational. Affliction could be all manner of different types of trials and tribulations. Am I talking to anybody in here? Anybody here ever had some afflictions in your life? If you say you haven't, you're lying. Could be all manner of different types of trials and tribulations and troubles. Writer says before his troubles came, he went astray. Now watch this, because you got to understand astray in the proper context. To go astray means he was carried away with sin. He was carried away with worldly pursuits. He thought he was on top of the world doing his own thing. Keep in mind now, this was before all of his afflictions and troubles. Before all of his troubles, he was living his life carefree and careless. Could care less about God. Could care less about God's word. Could care less about worship. Could care less about doing the right thing. That was before he was afflicted. That was before God turned his life into a train wreck. God, watch this, 
God uses affliction. God uses the pain of trouble and trauma to wake up comfortable, careless, carefree, sleeping folk. Watch this. Most people don't even consider God until trouble come into their lives. Most people don't have time for God until they think their time is running out. They think they have all the time in the world and then a storm show up. Anybody here ever had a storm show up in your... Watch this. I submit to you, when the pandemic started, people that never prayed before started praying to God. But now people are trying to get back to their pre-pandemic program. Writer says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He says, I lived my life careless and carefree, but now I have kept your word. <laughs> Watch this. After doing my own thing, he says, now after going through hell and high water, now after going through all my troubles, I believe your word. I believe your word is true. I trust your word. I accept your word. I, I hear your word. I, I obey your word. Must be more than just a hearer of the word. You got to be a doer of the word. Our troubles teach us to put our faith and trust in the Lord. And then lastly, the writer says in verse 68, concerning God, he says, you are good. I don't care what nobody else say. I don't care what nobody else, but, but I'm, the writer says, you are good. He says, and you, he says, and you do good. Teach me your statutes. The writer says, watch this, the writer says, God is good. Wait a minute. I don't mean like the cliche. The writer says God is really good. The writer says God is good to the point he don't wait for other folk to get up and give him praise. He know for himself how good God has been to him. He says God is good. He's just good. He's a standard of goodness. He's the example of goodness. He's the existence of goodness. Without God, there is no good thing in us. Psalm 48, 1, Psalm 48, 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. How many know that God not only is good, but God is great? But you need to understand the difference. God's greatness focuses on his divine power. His greatness raised Jesus from the dead. His greatness raised a sinner like you and me from our sin. Pick us up and turn us around. That's his power. But his goodness focuses on his divine character. God is good. Not just because he does good, but because he is good. Anybody want to bless the Lord just because he's good? Y'all don't hear me. He ain't just good when everything's going good for you. He's good when hell breaking out. Oh, he's just good. And you don't have to wait till you feel better to praise him. I know you can praise him when you're feeling down in the dumps. And when you praise him, I don't know he'll lift you up. I believe I'm in the right house this morning. The writer, the writer, ha, the writer said God is just good. God is always good. 
God always does what is good. Yeah. Psalmist said in Psalm 23, 6, he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. If that's your testimony, give God a hand of praise. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. But before that, he came through 42 generations, took nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He died on Friday, but early Sunday morning. How many know this ain't an Easter service? How many know this is a resurrection service? Early Sunday morning. He got up with all power. Because God is good. Now I want to start from the choir stand. Now I want to move through the pulpit. Now I want to move through the deacon and deaconess row. Through every pew back to the usher row. That if you know God is good, go ahead and stand up and give him praise. I'm not talking about what you heard. I'm talking about if you know God is good, give God. <laughs> I said he's good. He's good. In the morning, he's good. Noonday, he's good. Late at night, he's good. How many know he's good all the time? Go ahead and bless the Lord. why you know how I know how good God is and I only know what I know but what I know is because of what I learned in this word and I heard through his word that he may not show up when you want him but he's always right on time do I have a witness in here do I have a witness in here that you know in his word that he may not show up when you want him how many know God is an on time God? Give him praise. We're all standing. We're going to open the doors to the church. I don't know about you, but if I didn't know him, I would come and say, what must I do to be saved? While the blood's running warm in your veins. If there's anybody in here that don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, my question is, what will it take? What will it take? The next pandemic is going to be worse than the last. War is about to break out globally. Folk worrying about a civil war. Beyond all that, you ought to be afraid just that, how, how many here don't want to go to hell? I don't want to go to hell. I'm going to go with the one that takes me to the place where weeping will no longer be, will be around the throne of grace, praising God for eternity. I want to be in that place. You can't get there without Jesus. Would you come today? Would you come? You could come right now where you're at. Would you come? If you don't know him, will you come? When he started talking about being stupid, I, I remember, but I thank God I've learned. Or ignorant, but I've learned. I've learned. Would you come today while the blood is running warm in your vein? Pastor said, what will it take? What will it take? What will it take for you to take one step and he'll take the next with you. Would you take that step today? First, you have to admit, that, Lord, I need to take this step. I was astray. I was going the wrong way. But today I heard your word. So I'm willing to take this step. I admit that I am a sinner. Then you have to believe. B, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is a remedy. Would you come? Not looking to the right. See, we look to the right and the left when someone comes, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. 
It says, B, believe that Jesus Christ is a remedy for sin. Then C, C, says you have to confess. Lord, I need you. I admit it. I'm confessing that your son is a remedy. If you do those three, the Bible says that you're saved. Admit, believe, confess. Would you come today? Perhaps you stand in need of prayer. Would you come? Maybe you've broken fellowship with him. Would you come? The question was asked again today. What will it take? Would you come? Come on. Would you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. They're coming. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. Would you come? Amen. For someone else, would you come? All we have is right now. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not promised. But if he were to call my name, I want to be safe in his arms. Would you come? You may be seated in his presence, but the invitation is still extended. the psalmist said before I was afflicted I went astray I did my own thing raised hell until hell was raising me thought I was on top of the mountain and realized I was under burden Ran so hard from God until I ran into God. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? So we want to extend that invitation. Could be someone here sitting in the sanctuary. Could be someone in, on live stream watching us. You don't want to put off for tomorrow 
what you should do today. I keep referencing that bridge in Baltimore. And that barge hit that bridge. Six people died on that bridge. Thought they were going to make it to wherever they were going. And that was the last thing on their mind that they were going to die that night or that morning. And you don't know what tomorrow holds. We know who holds tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to make it out of, out of today. And so you should not put off for tomorrow what you should do today. Listen, there's one guarantee in life. There's one guarantee in life. I, I was going to say two, but the truth is that for those who are in Christ, death is not even a guarantee because Christ can come and rapture us up. But there is one guarantee that if you believe in Jesus, if you really believe in Jesus, you're going to heaven. You're saved. My, my bank account, my, my wife and I, our bank account fluctuates. Uh -huh. Our mood fluctuates. <laughs> but one thing that is constant is Christ. <laughs> Do I have a witness in here? But that is only for those who accept him. And we're not going to assume everybody in the house has accepted Christ. Just because you come to church, uh, just because you stand in the garage, that don't make you a car. Just because you come to church don't make you a Christian. You got to believe on the risen Savior. And so we extend that invitation. A, admit that you are a sinner. Believe, be, believe that Jesus is the only remedy for sin. The only remedy for sin. And then, see, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And mean it. And the Bible says you shall have everlasting life. If you are here and you don't have a church home, we'll, we'll be glad to be the church of your choice, and we can recommend other churches, but we'll glad, be glad to be the church of your choice. If you, if you are saved but you have not been baptized, baptism is the first command. You, you, you can't be baptized to be saved, but it's the first command that is given after you are saved. And if you won't obey the first command, you're probably going to have a problem obeying the, any other, anything else God says to you. So if you haven't been baptized, we'll be happy to baptize you. We baptize every second Sunday of the month. But beyond all that, if you believe in Christ, if you accept Christ, you shall have everlasting life. If you've done that, give God praise. We have, we have, a, number, we have a number that have come. If anyone else desires to come, um, certainly someone could stand in your stead. I know one thing, I don't want anyone standing in my place before God. I want to stand in my own place before God. So if anybody else want to come, if want, I, I know them, them pews are comfortable. I know them pews are comfortable. But sometimes you got to push past your comfortability and step out. It ain't, you're not stepping out because uh, people see you and because you want attention. You're stepping out because you want to let folk know that you ain't ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You don't mind walking up and having someone pray over you. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. We ain't gonna wait all night, but we'll wait. Hmm. How many know God is good? How many know God is good? Not because someone told you. How many know you know God is good? Yeah, yeah. If God ain't good, I'll eat dirt. And there ain't going to be no dirt eating today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for my. We thank you, Father, for our, your presence in this place. Lord, if you're not here, it's not worship. And so, Father, we thank you that, that you are here, not only in the building, but in our hearts. Thank you for your precious Son, the Christ, that through him and him alone, 
we have everlasting life. Thank you that he died for our sin. But Lord, I thank you that he died for my sin. <laughs> thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. I know he's real because I can feel him on the inside right now. Thank you for your word that is the lamp and the light that gives us direction. Thank you for not only the communion with the Holy Ghost, thank you for the fellowship with the saints. That we know that we are in this together, that, that, that all of us are going through something, but Father, we know that we are in the same boat when it comes to salvation through Jesus Christ. And there is none other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Give God a hand of praise for Jesus. Thank you, God. Now, Father, there are those who are gathered around the altar. You know every situation. You know every circumstance. There's someone here who has had surgery. And although the doctors did their job, uh, it was the great physician that brought them through. Someone here lost a loved one, Father, and, but you are a comforter. Someone has been given a bad diagnosis, but you are a healer. And, all, uh, and, and even more than that, Father, you are the healer of a sin-sick soul. And so we thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for the choir and for the director and for the musicians. Thank you for the preachers and for the deacon and the deaconesses. Thank you, Father, for every person on every pew from here to the usher world. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of coming into the house of prayer just one more day. Thank you, Father, that after Easter Sunday, that we came back on Resurrection Sunday to give you praise. Now have your way. Have your way, Father. Sometimes the storm gets rough. Sometimes the journey gets tough. But, Father, I'd rather go through hell and high water with you than go through a flower bed of ease without you. We thank you, Father, by the clapping of our hands. We bless you. We bless you because you're real. We bless you because you're good. We bless you because you're an on-time God. We bless you because you're a healer. We bless you because you're a comforter. We bless you because of your peace. We bless you because of your joy. We bless you because you saved us. Gave us everlasting life. Now have your way, oh God. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for communion. Go ahead and let's have our seats. of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same tonight 
in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sipped, saying, this cup is the new testimony of my blood. This eve, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye, ye do share the Lord's death till he comes. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his holy word. Amen. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive us all of our sins. We seek a clean heart, Father, that we might partake in the instructions of taking this communion knowing that you will come back for us your children we don't know father when your only begotten son is to return to come for us but all we ask father through the grafting in of the tree of life, we remain a part of that tree. We seek forgiveness, Father, that our branches will not be cut off. We pray, Father, that we will be prayerful and we will keep watch for the coming of your beloved Son, Jesus the anointed again father give us a clean heart that we might take this communion we will simulate father that we too are sitting at the table in Jesus name father not the name of your servant but in the Jesus name father we seek forgiveness and we say amen
of me were reminded today that he not only died but that he rose from the dead that we might have everlasting life let us eat the bread let us drink the drink when you're done chew and say amen <laughs>
Wednesday, on Wednesday, uh, Deacon Willie Brown will be preaching his second trial sermon, and so we look forward to, amen. He, 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 he did a great job uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and uh, to God be the glory, and so this will be his second trial sermon, so we look forward to coming out and supporting him uh, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. As I said, we're not coming out to be uh, uh, critics um, if it's a word it's a word from God and so we need to heed what's being said that being said our, ha our hearts and minds clear let us go ahead and stand <clears throat> we are on program to go to Stockton next Sunday afternoon uh, for the church anniversary for is it the church anniversary or the pastor's anniversary it's a pastor's anniversary for Pastor David Evans at Greater Faith in Stockton. So myself, Sister Carter, will be going up with the male chorus. Anyone else that desires to go, that service will be at 3.30 in Stockton at Greater Faith Missionary Baptist Church. The following week, uh, third Sunday, we're on program to go over to Bethel Missionary Baptist Church for their church anniversary. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Am I wrong? She threw me off. <laughs> I, I was getting to that, but <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wasn't going to mention that over the mic, but since you put it out there. <laughs> anyway, so second Sunday, we're at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church for Third Sunday, thank you, Walter. At third Sunday at Beth Bethel for their church anniversary, um, the male chorus, the sanctuary cho choir is going over to Bethel. Amen. Fourth Sunday, we're at Community Baptist Church. They're not requesting our choirs, um, but uh, we're going to support them for their church anniversary. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what our eyes have seen what our hearts have felt, how you move through this place, how you, how you allowed us to give you the praise and the honor. Your word declares that you inhabit the praise of your people. As I said before, it's not worship unless you are there. Thank you, O oh God, for being here thank you for allowing us to be here now father we just ask that you would keep us there are those who are in bereavement those who have sickness those who have had bad doctors report there are all manner of trials and tribulations going on there is wars and rumors of wars rumors of even civil wars but we trust the God who sits high and looks low we are not uh, uh, swept away by all the, the issues and concerns going on in the world. We know according to your words, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that if we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding, in all of our ways acknowledge you, you shall direct our path. And so, Father, even now we bless you by the clapping of our hands, and we thank you. In the matchless name of Jesus we pray, amen. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. And they all sang together. God bless you and God keep you.